Okay, it's appropriate that Zach Coplin is following Jeannie Scott because he is sort of a young generation uh, follow-up to people like Eugenie Scott. Um, he is a science education activist from Louisiana who has campaigned to keep creationism and intelligent design out of the schools. I'm sure he's a pers close personal friend of uh, Bobby Jindal down there, Governor Jindal, uh, who has, uh, as Jeannie pointed out, signed into law uh, several laws uh, very favorable to creationism and intelligent design. Uh, but Zach's online petition uh, got over 70,000 signatures, including almost 80 Nobel laureates to fight these laws. He is the co-winner of the National Center for Science Education's 2012 Friend of Darwin, and he is also the winner of the 2012 Hugh Hefner First Amendment Award in Education. Please welcome Zach Coplin. Hey everyone. This is, okay. Hey everyone. Thank you all so much for being here so I can tell you about our fight for science in Louisiana and really across the country. So my home state, Louisiana, has a creationism law. And we're really just addicted to creationism. Our first creationism law was thrown out by the Supreme Court in 1987 in the Edwards versus Aguilar case. But that didn't stop them back in 2008 from passing a second. And we really just, we haven't learned our lesson. So now we have the Louisiana Science Education Act. Sounds good, right? Science education, everyone likes that. Except that this law isn't actually about teaching science. It's about sneaking creationism into the public school science classrooms. And what it allows is supplemental materials to critique controversial uh, science like evolution and climate change. Now, nothing else really needs to be critiqued, just very controversial science, evolution. So evolution isn't scientifically controversial. The overwhelming majority, 99% of the scientists and all the scientific evidence backs the theory of evolution. It is controversial to Louisiana legislators though. And because of this law, in Louisiana science classes, you can teach that the earth is not millions of years old and say that dinos lived with humans, as long as it's a supplemental material critiquing evolution. And that, that's all they have to do is, it's, it's, there's no real process to keep like whatever they want out of the classrooms. And technically under this law, they could even say bring in astrology into an astronomy class, bring in alchemy to a chemistry class, because it's, it's so open-ended that you could do anything you want with it. And so throughout this bill, this law, and all the talking points of its proponents, they say it's about critical thinking. That, that if we, we bring supplemental materials to critique this legislation, it will help students to think critically. And again, that sounds nice. We all want our students to think critically, but you don't get students to think critically by bringing in non-science into a science classroom. The th critical thinking is a nature of the scientific method. And when, when you're teaching kids good science and teaching kids the science, they're going to learn how to think critically anyway. And you're only going to harm them if you bring in non-science and teach that science. And so make no mistake, for all this talk about the Louisiana Science Education Act, being about critical thinking, it's really a creationism law. And when Senator Ben Nevers, the Louisiana legislator who sponsored this bill, was talking about it before it passed, he was quite clear about what it was for. He said that uh, the Louisiana Family Forum, a local religious rights group, asked him to draft the law because they wanted creationism taught wherever Darwin's theory was taught. So it doesn't, it doesn't get much simpler than that. The, the legislative sponsor said it was for creationism, and the governor who signed it also said it was for creationism. This April, Governor Bobby Jindal went on NBC, NBC's Education Nation, and the host asked him, said, she said, what do you think about, like, what about creationism in public schools? And she asked about public schools specifically, and she said, well, we have what's called the Science Education Act that says if a teacher wants to supplement those materials, the school board's okay with that, the state school board's okay with that, and they can supplement those materials. I've got no problem if a school board, a local school board says, we want to teach our kids about creationism, that some people have these beliefs as well. Let's teach them about intelligent design. He went on to ask, what are we afraid of? when we're teaching our kids creationism. 
And, you know, that's a good question. I'm afraid we're really going to harm our students, harm our state if we teach them creationism. That would be my answer to Governor Jindal. And also, by the way, the Discovery Institute, a local creationist think tank, or not, a national creationist think tank, claims that Bobby Jindal is confused about this law, and he doesn't know what he's talking about when he says it's for creationism. Now, frankly, whatever you say about Governor Bobby Jindal, maybe that he's doing this for political reasons, I think he's a very smart man. I think he understands exactly what law he signed. I think when he says it's about creationism, I tend to trust him and believe he means it's about creationism when he says that. And when the Louisiana State Board of Education originally wrote the rules implementing this law, they initially said that you can't teach creationism with this law. And you can't teach intelligent design. You can only teach science. It was a good start. And the creationists went ballistic. And so they got those rules scrapped. And so now the la that was the last line of defense against teaching creationism in Louisiana. That's gone. And so the only group, so the sponsor of this law and the governor who signed it said it's about creationism. There's no defense against teaching creationism. The only groups who want it are creationist groups like the Discovery Institute and the Louisiana Family Forum. It's pretty crystal clear that this is only about teaching creationism. And it gets even more clear when you look at the supplemental materials that potentially could be used in the classroom. Supplemental materials we've seen that have been brought out as potentially OK under this law say that the Cambrian expo explosion hasn't been explained, that there are gaps in the fossil record, even that Lucy wasn't actually a transitional fossil, but is really just a monkey that, that exists the same as today. And if we, if we want to get even more specific, there's this woman who testifies in support of this law every year in Louisiana. She happens to run creationevidence.info and has a nice section on her website where she explains what could be used under the Louisiana Science Education Act. She suggests materials from Answers in Genesis and the Institute for Creation Research and says that dinos lived with humans. So these are, these are supplemental materials that have been suggested to be used under Louisiana's law. And this law doesn't just threaten evolution. It threatens climate, the teaching about climate change in Louisiana schools. And the other thing is, this isn't just a Louisiana problem. We see laws like this introduced all across the country. A law in Tennessee passed in 2012, modeled off Louisiana's bill, that does the exact same thing. And we see usually about 10 laws or more, or bills introduced across the country trying to do the same thing. Thanks to Jeannie and the NCSC, those generally get smacked down. But we've got now two that we have to fight in Louisiana and Tennessee and keep the battle across the country. And again, this is not just a Louisiana problem. I now live in Texas. And some of you all may have heard today or in the past about the Texas State Board of Education hearings. And we are currently in the middle of adopting new science textbooks in Texas right now. And the thing about Texas is it's so large that Texas science textbooks tend to be used all across the country. So the bad news is Texas has already compromised its science curriculum. It has, pro, uh, has pro, uh, parts of it that call for all sides of scientific theories to be taught. And it's been so compromised that Governor Rick Perry, during the 2012 presidential election, said that Texas teaches creationism in its schools based on these standards. What's even worse is these standards affect which science textbooks will be adopted in Texas. And these textbooks will possibly be used in any state around the country. And so the, these textbooks are being adopted right now. And it gets even harder when we have these standards that have already, the, the textbooks have to meet these standards and they've been compromised already. And now we have Texas state board members who are creationists. And the state board members appointed so-called expert reviewers to review these textbooks. And the problem with that is the reviewers were not experts. They were Discovery Institute fellows and members of the Creation Science Hall of Fame reviewing biology section, biology and evolution sections of textbooks. And they sent in reviews that called for things like the creation model based on biblical principles to be included in all of Texas's textbooks. The good news is that so far, the textbook publishers have refused to bow down to the pressure in Texas and have kept their textbooks the same. The question is, will the State Board of Education and the creationists who are on the State Board actually adopt these textbooks or will they say, they don't meet the standards, they don't teach all sides, they don't teach the gaps in the fossil record, so we're not gonna adopt these books. And there's a meeting coming up in November 
that will decide whether we actually get new science textbooks in Texas. Um, and the interesting thing about Texas I've learned is from Louisiana, the creationists try to be sneaky. They, they do sometimes admit it's about creationism, but most of the time they talk about critical thinking. Not so much in Texas. And I'd like to introduce you to Don McElroy, the former Texas State Board of Education chair. He testified in September at the first meeting of the Texas State Board of Education. And he was sort of an, like, he, he, was, he has an ace in our sleeve, actually, because he ended up endorsing the textbooks. He seemed very confused about the textbooks. And you'll see why in a second. Even though these biology books are full of unsubstantiated dogmatic statements supporting evolution, there are still two major reasons why you should adopt these books. First, by so doing, you yeah, will strike yeah. the final blow to the teaching of evolution. There are some hidden jewels in these texts just waiting to be mined by inquisitive students that can destroy evolution. In 2009, when the board adopted these new science standards, the evolutionists were painted into a corner. The authors were required to provide scientific evidence for explanations of the sudden appearance and stasis of groups in the fossil record and the complexity of the cell, and most importantly, to identify the specific pages where they were to do so. These sections are the hidden jewels. In the following week, American Association for the Advancement of Science reported new science standards for Texas schools strike a major blow to the teaching of evolution. The adoption of these books represents the final blow because despite their both full of most full assertions of robust evidence for evolution, when you actually read those identified sections, the hidden jewels, you will find the evidence incredibly weak to non-existent. And if there's no evidence, there's no evolution. How much evidence do the authors provide? They just wave their magic wand of words and come up with some simple explanations. That just so stories. The second reason I ask you to adopt these books is because they happen consistently to, I mean, coincidentally to support what the Bible says. What we see in the world around us supports what the Bible says. But what we see in these books supports what the Bible says. Test it for yourself. Open at random any page and ask yourself if the description and illustration you find supports the claims of the Bible or of evolution. Even the units on evolution support what the Bible says. Because, as demonstrated, they don't even support evolution. Ironically, evolutionists argue that creationists want to force their religious views in the text. But just the teaching of biology does that. And teaching evolution demonstrates that's not how God did it. Since true testable science trumps dogmatism, strike the final blow to the teaching of evolution, support the Bible, and adopt these books. Thanks. So, so Don McElroy obviously thinks, since, he, since uh, he doesn't understand evolution, therefore the biology textbooks don't teach evolution. You know, honestly, we'll take that. If he endorses the textbooks, that helps us. So we're fighting in Texas, and we're fighting in Louisiana for good science. And that's what we need to be doing all over the country. And when I was in high school, we had this law, the Louisiana Science Education Act. And it passed when I was a sophomore, before my sophomore year in high school, and I was waiting for an adult to stand up and take it on. And so I, I, it just seemed so silly to me, and I assumed it'd be gone before the next year. I assumed an adult would fix it. So I waited a year, and nothing happened. And I waited a second year, and nothing happened. And in fact, the only thing I saw was that it was actually starting to be used. The Livingston Parish School Board made big news in state because they discussed how this law is for, quote, critical thinking and creationism. They even said, well, we don't want a lawsuit, but someone needs to stand up for Jesus. And we need teachers, we need religious teachers to teach creationism in the science classroom. So that was the only action I'd seen on this law, was a local school board trying to put creationism in their curriculum. And at that point, I realized, I'm about to graduate. I don't know, when I, I don't know if I'm going to be in Louisiana after I graduate, and no one's standing up and fighting this. So if I really want to fight this law, I need... I need to do it myself, I need to stand up now. And so the first step for me was to find Dr. Barbara Forrest, who is an expert on creationism. She was an expert witness at the Kitzmiller trial and happened to live about 25 minutes down the road from me in Louisiana. And so I sent her an email and got her help starting to repeal this law. And the next step after that was to find a legislative sponsor. So I had good news and bad news on that front. And the, the bad news was that there were of the entire Louisiana legislature, there were only three people who voted against it in the state house and none in the Senate. And so the, that was the bad news. The good news was we at least knew who we had to go to and who had the courage to stand up against the law. And so I went to Senator Karen Carter Peterson, who had since left the house and become a senator, and asked for her support repealing the law. And I started explaining why the law was bad, why it was wrong, all the support I had started getting in support of this repeal. And she stopped me. She cut me off and said, you don't have to tell me when do we get started. And so 
that was the first year. And I'll introduce you to Senator Peterson in a few minutes because she's absolutely amazing. And so we, the first year we, we tried to repeal this law, we, we had amazing support. We had over 40 Nobel laureates, major science organizations. And we went into committee and we lost that vote five to one. And so we had, we had everyone we needed on board except for Louisiana legislators. And I'm gonna show you the main reason we lost, um, thanks to one Senator Julie Quinn, who led the charge against us in committee. And here she is. Can you meet Senator Quinn? What I think most of the kids here would like to stand for is if you had asked, would you prohibit it? It wasn't what I asked. I, I know. And I am an attorney, and I listen patiently to all the accolades that everyone has behind all the little letters behind their name, doctor, etc. So as an attorney, I'm asking a question, and I would like an answer to that question. Do you support, since you came to the table, do you support a law that prohibits the teaching of religion in the classroom? Not in classes like English or history or comparative religions or philosophy class. So you support the promotion of religion in an English class? The Bible is always used in most English classes because it's a classic piece of literature. Okay. And, and promotion would be the key word in response. Yeah. A, a promotion would be, um, just if I can respond, I Go did listen patiently and I appreciate that, Senator Quinn. And the only point I was trying to make is that if you wanted a response to your question, somebody needed to come to the mic so it could be on the record what the response was. And I don't think that any one individual, even Mr. Copeland, can speak for everyone in the audience. And that probably... That's kind of why I was... I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt, but yeah. I, I, after listening to everyone, it, was, it seemed pretty clear mm -hmm. that what they were espousing as a general concept was what they consider religious references based on to, as to creationism not being right. taught in the classroom. So I was rephrasing it, then do you support a bill that prohibits the promotion, the teaching of religious beliefs in the classroom? Well, the and, only and they, thing that they, they wouldn't even answer that. Well, they weren't directly. at the table, number one, but I don't think that, I mean, the instrument before Senate Bill 70 deals specifically with creationism in science classes, and that's why you see the plethora of people with little letters little letters behind their name big letters i wasn't trying to be well i just heard little letters respectful and i am very respectful of four, over 40 Nobel laureates i'm very respectful Absolutely. of the association of biology teachers i'm very respectful of louisiana association of biology educators i'm very respectful of louisiana okay, science, science teachers association i'm very respectful of the american association of advancement of science and i'm res respectful of the american institute of biological sciences as well as american society for Cell Biology, and the Society for Vertebrate Paleontology. Lastly, the American Association of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. Half of this stuff I can't even enunciate, and yes, they have little, big, medium, and big letters behind their names, and they're all suggesting that we repeal the act. That's Senator Peterson, and as you can tell, she's awesome. And so that was our first year. Despite that speech there, we still lost five to one because after Senator Quinn had come out fairly angrily against us and reminded us that she had two little letters behind her own name, uh, JD, we lost five to one. And so people asked us, I mean, people told us that entire time, well, we knew, you knew you were going to lose. Why did you even bother? And, they, and so they told us for the next year, don't, don't even try because you, you, you just lost five to one. You've seen what the result will be. We had a newspaper column say it's not worth it because we're just going to lose and Louisiana's backwards. And that doesn't really matter. We don't, we're not here just because, we, like, we don't fight this because it's easy and because we expect to win on the first try. So we came back in there the next year and we made an improvement. We didn't lose five to one. We only lost two to one that year. And several of those legislators who voted against us the first time weren't willing to come out and vote, us, vote against us the second time. Um, but it, it, I've learned, when we go to the Louisiana legislature, every year we create a ce celebrity. So the first one was Senator Julie Quinn with her little letters. The next one was uh, Senator Mike Walsworth, who he, he doesn't like evolution. He told, us, he told us this spring that they just skipped over that in his science class, and his education with evolution is some stuff he Googled on Wikipedia before the hearing. Uh, and it became very clear because he doesn't know anything about science. Not an experiment that you could could 
Yes, there is have an experiment. And, and the classroom that would say, here's Darwin's theory of evolution, there and this proves it without a yes. shadow of a doubt. I will tell you about that. They have done experiments with E. coli bacteria, and they have... They have taken those E. coli and they have taken uh, different containers of them and they froze them in time so that... Um, How long of time? Uh-huh. How long? They just froze them over generations, like years. Oh, okay. But this is an experiment. Okay. And so then they let the, uh, the E. coli that are in the different vials continue to evolve. Okay. And then they take this group and they freeze it. And then they take this group and they freeze it. And then you can take all of them over time and compare them. And you can see how the E. coli have changed over time and how they evolved. But what's really interesting... They evolve into a person? No, they... they okay, they, I'm just asking how, how, how to get there. I'm just trying to figure out how to get there. But go ahead. I mean, so they change... Person. I, I'm just... I think that's what we're talking about on... Oh, but that's not what we're talking about. Oh, okay. Go ahead. We're I'm just trying to find evolution. out... evolution. Yeah, absolutely. So these E. coli... Have it becomes very clear that he doesn't just know nothing about evolution, but also just science in general. And this is, this is him talking about molecules. He... The background of this is he was he he Googled criticisms of Darwin or something like that and then decided to read the first thing he found. The problem was he didn't understand what he was reading well enough to actually read it. I'll just give you the first, uh, I guess, first sentence. Darwin's theory of evolution is a theory in crisis in light of the tremendous advances we've made in molecular Molecular, thank you. Biology, biochemistry, and genetics over the past 50 well, years. Well, I think you've Would just you... proved, I just think you proved a point that you can't trust what you get over the internet. Yep. You can see in the background, Senator Pearson just left the room there and didn't come back for 10 minutes. So, yeah, she needed some time away from that. And so that's what we're up against in Louisiana. We have we have the support now of 78 Nobel laureates major science organizations, the city of New Orleans, the Orleans Parish School Board banned the teaching of creationism and intelligent design in their schools because of this law. So we've, we've built incredible support, but we, really, we keep losing in Louisiana because we don't have the support of these backwards anti-science legislators who don't know what evolution is or even molecules. And so people keep asking us why, why we keep fighting this fight when we, when we keep losing. And we, ca we came back again for the third time in the row. And I'm going to give you the third celebrity in the Louisiana legislature. And we've gone from doubting evolution or doubting little letters to evolution to molecules to whether we trust medicine in general. And this is Senator Elbert. This is Senator Elbert Guillory. Concern that we might shut off the presentation of, of ideas um, by we have that. prematurely yeah. declaring one science or another science as, yeah. as pseudoscience. This doctor uh, practiced in an, uh, an open circle in a dusty spot. He wore no shoes, was semi-clothed, uh, used a lot of bones that he threw around. I would, I would bet that all of us would agree that his science is a pseudoscience. We would not have respect for his science and the practice of his science. That would concern me because if we were able to declare what I have verified for myself is something that has some validity to it. I mean, the stuff that man told me about my history. Yeah. That, it's yet not. If, if I closed my mind yeah. when I saw this man uh -huh. in the dust, throwing some bones on the ground, semi-clothed, if I had closed him off and just said, that's not science. I'm not going to see this doctor. 
uh, I would have shut off a very good experience for myself and actually would not have discovered some things that he told me about what I needed to go and do when I got home to see my doctor. So that was this spring. We have now which doctors are the reason we should protect this law. And I think that actually should make a point to a lot of the religious right in Louisiana that this law does allow witch doctors to be brought in the same way it allows creationism, technically. And so, so despite all our progress, we still, it would seem like we, we're, on the, we're on the upswing, right? We've mended, we, like, even if this law still exists, we're mending the damage. And you'd think with a creationism law, that's really all the damage that Governor Bobby Jindal could do to science in Louisiana, right? It doesn't, it doesn't get much more than a creationism law. You'd be wrong, though, if you thought that, because Governor Jindal's already done more to damage science in Louisiana than the LSEA. We've passed a voucher program that takes money from public schools and gives money to creationist ones, gives public money to creationist schools, schools that call scientists sinful men, or that, that put in their student handbook that their students are required to defend creationism against traditional scientific theory. Because we really wouldn't want any traditional scientific theory in our schools, would we? And there's at least 20 schools, probably a lot more, but 20 schools in Louisiana that were originally slated for 1,200 voucher students and about $11 million that teach creationism and are, and like we're getting, they're getting public money. They're getting a ton of public money. That number was reduced after it came out, what they were teaching. But the school, most of these schools, almost all the schools remained in the program, and they ended up with $4 million or so their first year, and a large number of students still. And then this, it's been a second year now. We're in our second year of voucher stu students. They've expanded the program with more creationist schools. There's at least probably a dozen more creationist schools that are blatantly putting on their website they use curriculum like Abika or accelerated Christian education curriculums that say that dragons were real, they were fire-breathing dinosaurs through fire-breathing chemical glands in their noses, and they also lived with humans. And so that, that was, that's my favorite creationist lesson, I think, that, that fire-breathing dinos lived with humans. Uh, if, if, you, if you worry about revisionist history, too, there's a problem with that. Some of these schools taught that the KKK was good and did moral, moral, morally good things. And so there, there's another issue there. Um, one of my favorite things is, a, is a, because this isn't, again, I, I start with this as a Louisiana program, but this isn't just a Louisiana problem. There's nine voucher program, or there's nine states with voucher programs and one in DC that we know have creationist schools in them. My favorite program is Florida's that has about 100, we found about 160 schools in Florida's program that are teaching creationism. And the Miami New Times did a wonderful editorial, or not, not an expose, on their voucher program where they learned that uh, some of these schools were run by convicted co cocaine dealers and kidnappers. So again, it's not just creationism. If you, don't, if you don't like kids going to schools run by kidnappers, then don't be for vouchers. And so, so there's nine states in D.C. that have these voucher programs that teach creationism. We found over 300 schools, and probably a lot more, because that's still just the tip of the iceberg. That's what, if you get on your computer and Google these schools, you find. And so there's probably a lot more that are smart enough to realize we shouldn't put, we teach that dinos lived with humans on our website if we want public money. So this is probably a much larger problem. From, from what we already see, it's huge. Potentially, 300 schools could be hundreds of millions of dollars in public money. But it's probably even larger than that, probably larger than hundreds of millions of public dollars going to creationism and the KKK was good. And so, so despite our progress, we face huge, huge challenges in terms of legislation like we have in Louisiana with voucher programs, with creationism laws, with school boards across the country that are just not teaching science. One of the more recent Gallup polls on what teachers taught in science classrooms showed that 60% of science teachers did not teach evolution fully the way it should be taught because they were either A, afraid, or B, just didn't have the background in evolution that they needed to teach it. And there was another 13% of teachers who freely admitted to teaching creationism in their classrooms. So that, that, that's, that's what we're up against right now. We're up against nearly 73% of the 
science teachers in America not giving our students the education they deserve. And that, that's not going to be easy to overcome. But it, th there's a quote that I've been relying on for months now, and it comes from President John F. Kennedy. He gave it at this, my school at Rice before we went to the moon. And he said, we choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one we are willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one which we intend to win. We don't do things just because they're easy, because we went on our first try, because, because the politicians are pro-science and are doing all the right things. Because that's not, that's not where things stand right now. We'd like, we'd like politicians to actually do the right thing and not say like Representative Paul Brown did that evolution's a lie from the pit of hell. We'd like that to be the case, but it's not. And so we're going to have to fight for that. And we're going to do it. It's hard, but we have to win that fight. And we really, we do have two futures ahead of us. We can keep teaching our kids that evolution isn't real, and we can not have students prepared to deal with problems like antibiotic resistant bacteria. We could teach our kids that climate change isn't happening. And I, I'm from Louisiana. The water is rising every year. And when, when it comes to a point where it's unsustainable, I want kids, I want scientists who've been educated well, who know how to help us fight that and keep and really protect my state and protect places around the world from climate change. But if we teach kids that we just bury our heads in the sand and it doesn't exist, then we're never going to have anyone prepared to help fix it when the time comes. And another big problem is we just have cut $80 billion from science over the next decade with a budget sequester. And I'm sure many of you are scientists. And if, even, if we train, if, even if we fix all the problems with education and train our students in science, if we don't fund them to do research, then it won't matter anyway. Because if, if we're not creating science jobs, then no matter how well your, the kids learn biology, we're not going to have a new generation of research doctors to help cure diseases if there's no jobs for that, if there's no funding for that anymore. And so that's, that's really where I want to see a change. I want to see students learn science. I want to see politicians like Michelle Bachman, like Paul Brown, out of office. And thankfully, Michelle Bachman's leaving office. That, that's some good news there. We only have to wait till 2014. And she'll just be on Fox News after that. But we need, we need more science funding. We need students to learn science. And it's not going to be an easy fight. But it's a fight we have to win. And, I, and it looks like I've got a lot of time left to answer questions, if you all have any for me, about what we're doing in Louisiana, what we're doing in Texas, and anything you all can do to help out in the fight against science denial. Jim Downard, Spokane Secular Society. Uh, I can point out that that flame-throwing dinosaur stems directly from Dwayne Gish's Dinosaur by Design, the kids' book, yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. I've, I've been following this, and I'm very curious to know whether any of the gang at the Discovery Institute who have been dumping on you so consistently, have any of them ever contacted you or interviewed you or interacted in a personal way? So Josh Youngkin has once talked to me. In a, he, he, when he learned my grandfather had died, it was a few years late, but he sent me a nice note saying sorry. I was like, it was three years ago. So that was the only other interaction I've had with, with them beyond sort of the back and forth. So it, it's interesting. They usually send Klinghoffer after me whenever they, just like they seem to send every, him after everyone um, when they want an attack and like to keep someone like Casey Luskin or Youngkin to pretend like they're the nice faces who are happy and friendly. Um, they sent Youngkin down to Louisiana this year, though, and he, I mentioned the creation evidence.info woman. He got to sit up there at the table right next to her, and he looked very uncomfortable the entire time that he had to be sitting right next to someone who made his agenda so obvious. And I've mentioned that, and the Discovery Institute did not take kindly to it, and actually, um, in reaction, said they accused me of being a carpetbagger and said, I have no Louisiana accent, and I only seem to be putting y'all in my words. To, uh, to pretend like I'm from Louisiana. That, that was their reaction to, uh, to, to my comments on Youngkin coming down to Louisiana. So, yeah, Youngkin, Youngkin, so the family forum, what I think it was is the family forum couldn't attend that hearing, and so the Discovery Institute had to send in a substitute. I'm sure they 
appreciated sending in an out-of-state lobbyist all the way down to Louisiana to tell the Louisiana legislature that evolution isn't real. And it was, it was quite fun. He, he, I don't think he really enjoyed his time on the stand, I'd say that. Thank you. Uh, James Ford, University of Saskatchewan Free Thought Alliance. Um, the prime minister of my country is a man by the name of Stephen Harper. Uh, he's an evangelical Christian. And every four years during the election cycle, or whenever he decides to prorogue our parliament, which is sort of the equivalent of a government shutdown, um, he'll go on a tour of Campus Crusade for Christ ministries in various campuses across my country. And one of the lessons that he preaches um, as an evangelical pastor uh, is that no matter what mainstream society or what the lefties uh, want to say about you, you should never have your feelings hurt by someone uh, on the left or on the progressive side or someone who's sane um, telling you you're crazy because you have God on your side. And I wonder, especially watching the YouTube videos um, with, with folks on our side under attack like that from the overwhelming majority of crazy people in the room, uh, from a psychological standpoint, how do you arm yourself against that and, and keep from being broken down by that day after day? So this is sort of, I break into two halves. When the creationists testify, and if y'all want, um, I can show you some videos of some of the creationists we have in Louisiana. Um, does that actually sound good to y'all? Yes or no? Okay, I'll, I'll pull up a video in a few seconds actually after. But, and we'll only watch like two minutes because that's really all I can handle. I, I, tend, I tend to walk out of the room when they start talking because the way these hearings work is you talk, they talk and you don't really have that much opportunity to rebut what they say, and there's really not that much point to do it anyway because they just sort of throw out a number of absurd arguments that don't make sense and aren't science, and it's almost, it's not worth really giving a both sides thing to it. And just, when, when, when they start talking about fish and hot dogs and random things that make no sense, then you just sort of have to ignore it. And so I leave the room for that. When you're under attack, like we are by some of the legislators, you really just have to sit down and re-explain, like, no, this is what science is. Define sci I tend to define the scientific method a few times every hearing for them and explain. I also have to, exp a lot of things I have to explain is you can be religious without being a creationist. And so they like to pull out, like this Nobel laureate believes in God. And I have to say, well, he also, like that does not make him a creationist it's even better when they pull out someone who's dead. It's like, please don't slander dead people. And so th this year, they like to, since I'm at Rice, they would like to bring out Richard Smalley, who had a deathbed conversion to Christianity and cite him as a creationist. It's like, you can be, again, you can have your deathbed conversion without being a creationist. And I keep having to tell them, he, no, you can, be, again, you can be Christian without being creationist. We have all these pastors on our side, too, who are Christian without being creationist. And you, so there's various things you just go through and remind them, and it gets, I mean, we'll say it gets personal, it gets really nasty. They brought out about a 15-year-old kid this year to compare me to Hitler. And that, that it, like, it, it wears, you just get tired, and they're, they spent a week going, like, after, after the meeting this year, said, well, okay, I'm just gonna, like, sleep because I'm exhausted after that hearing. And then you just get back up and go try it again because you have to. And that, that's really the only way to do it, is it it's nasty, and they can be really nasty, but you have to fight it. And I'll quickly give you a video. I met, I've mentioned this creationevidence.info woman a few times, and now I'll let you hear what she's saying because it's it's quite interesting. Um, she she talks a lot about how you can't find fossils in the right places in the fossil record. Okay, one sec. This is a creationevidence.info woman, and when I hear y'all shouting stop, I'll stop. Years ago, I'm a homeschooler. I still teach biology today, and also logic and critical thinking. Um, I'm here, critical thinking. Science in the classroom really needs to be on balance. There's so much that's not being presented. Last time I was here, I explained the difference between observable science and um, historical science. And I proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that evolution is not a fact. Like she said, yes, we can prove evolution. And she says, oh, we have all these experiments. She talked about gravity. Gravity's in the present. You can, 
You can um, test it. You can repeat it. You can prove it falsifiable. A theory, anything under scrutiny has to be falsifiable under the scientific method. And when you talk about evolution, that's something in the past. I made that point last week. But let's talk about the Cambrian rock layer, where they talked about all those levels. I'm going to be just really specific. Yeah, you should find something called farm in the rock layer. As you go down the bottom, everything's supposed to be primitive. If you go up to the top, it gets more complex. You could spell the word farm, fish, amphibian, reptile, mammal. You should kind of see that in the fossil record. We, could, we do kind of see that in the fossil record. But you know what? they got a problem at the very bottom. Even Darwin knew about it. He spoke about it in his book, Origin of Thumb Species. At the very bottom, you have the Cambrian explosion down in the very basic rock layers underneath all the other rock layers on top, where the fossils basically start, already there. You've got fish, amphibians, and reptiles. They weren't supposed to come until hundreds of millions of years later. Is that being taught to our students? Is the difference between um, historical science and observational science being taught to our students so they can tell the difference between what's fact and what is a story or a belief? Not so much a story, but a belief about the past. Evolution is important. Does it belong in the classroom? Yes, it does. But it, we need to be focused on evidence. What does the science say? And not censor um, things out. Now I ask myself, why are we back here again? This is the second time. But when I watch the media and I listen to them speak, this is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that evolution about, I'm hearing this bill promotes creation being taught in the classroom. And even when it passed the first time, I heard on WWL, you know, someone calls me up, I listen, and they're saying, oh, it's promoting creation in the classroom. I'm going, no, why are they saying this? Why are they saying it promotes creation in the classroom? It doesn't. It forbids it. And, and what they're doing is they're actually... I'm going to stop there because you get, you get the point. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it really, it's interesting. She's, they all pull this line, but it's not about creationism. But the woman speaking runs creationevidence.info. It's sort of like... Why is she sitting up there if this is not about creationism? And we sort of hear, again, you hear these lines, you hear observable and historical science all the time. They throw these things out as if there's, there's multiple types of science. She mentions later there's science the scientists don't know about. Um, yeah. <laughs> She's a little bit... She, she's one of our favorites. She, she comes in and helps us every year, I think. Uh, Suzanne Passman, creationevidence.info. And so I just sort of, you can tell, if you notice, I'm in the background or in the, on the table of all these videos. I'm not here because it's just not worth it for me to be in the room because it affects my sanity. And so I just sort of, I, I've sat through several of these. My very favorite, actually, I'm going to tell, when the first time I got involved was textbook hearings in Louisiana in 2010. And I went to a hearing for our State Board of Education where we had one of the heads of the family forum, our local religious right group, stand up with a t-shirt that said natural selection. And I will never forget, because he go, this is the same t-shirt Dylan Klebo wore when he shot all those kids at Columbine. And, <laughs> and, and basically said that if we teach kids evolution, then we're gonna have Columbine happen in Louisiana. Oh. And so that's sort of the thing. Since, since that point, I've just said it's not worth it for me to sort of listen to that. And so I just take myself out of the equation. Because I can't, I can't really, like, where do you start opposing that? And, I, and every time, I, I'll bring in my friends, who are a lot of science students, and every time they come in, they all, the first time they're there, they'll sit there and like, pull out a notebook and start writing down what she says and start trying to critique it. And then they don't get to say anything because of the format. And it's just, it's too bad, so sad. So, yeah. It's not worth bothering with them. Wait. Um, uh, I am Mika. At this stage of my life, I am in Tucson, Arizona. And now I'm here. Um, there is a wonderful way to direct even the children beside the, the classroom. Mm -hmm. Because life is not only in the classroom. And one, and uh, one wonderful tool is television. Children do watch television, and there are science programs there mm -hmm. on um, uh, astronomy and biology and many other things. Mm -hmm. And there should be some way to direct them to these uh, to these channels. Mm -hmm. no, uh, nonetheless, they are on. I believe on these channels or on channels that 
TLC or some of these, they, do, they make a big deal out of all the supernatural phenomena. They promote it. They tell, you know, about conspiracy theories and all this with very much supporting it. So somehow there should be something that is directed maybe to children mm -hmm. on, this, on the channels that are willing to give them something that is easier for children to understand about astronomy, etc., and biology, etc. And when you see a movie, it's much stronger uh, than anything that a teacher can say. Yeah. Uh, in addition, I want to say I'm probably maybe the only person here, or maybe one of very few here, who really know all the um, biblical material in its original language, not this version or that version or that, in its original language, not in translation. And uh, this, um, um, some of the interpretations that happened here, I don't want to go to the details now, were not accurate. Uh, this is not what the original language say exactly. Um, I wanted also to add that when the Bible, Genesis, is uh, describing the creation of the universe, what they meant in the universe was a very certain narrow region in the Middle East. This was the universe. And by the way, if you want to know the exact location of Garden of Eden, it's right there. It's in Iraq. <laughs> So maybe everybody should know about it, where Garden of Eden is. Yep. And what I'd say on the video part is I think that may be something Bill Nye can talk about tonight, too. Um, and also on videos, everyone should watch Nova's uh, documentary on the Kitz Miller trial, too. I think Jeannie may appreciate that. And it's, a, it's absolutely wonderful and explains why intelligent design is not science. Yeah, mm -hmm. but there might be, you know, producers, and mm -hmm. some of them might be in this room, I don't know, that can take things that are, mm -hmm. that are designed on television programs, that are designed for adults to understand or to watch, and there are some excellent uh, uh, documentaries there, or fictional documentary or whatever, and uh, make them more kid-oriented that children and children will love it because they love everything on the TV. It's just that somebody should direct them there. Yeah. I mean, I hope more people do that. That's always the way it is. TV production isn't my talent, sadly. But I hope, I hope there's people who are fairly good at that. More Bill Nye's out there to help bring it to kids. Hi, I'm Erica Johnson, president of Seattle Atheists, and I'm really, I'm really grateful for the work you've done. This issue is near and dear to my heart because uh, I studied biology, and I also have a lot of young Earth creationists in my family, people I love dearly, who are very intelligent but believe crazy things. Uh, and and when I first told one of my uncles that I wanted to study biology, his the first thing he told me is I need to read Darwin's Black Box. Uh, and even then, I was like, oh, that's awkward. Um, and I'm, I'm actually really curious to know your personal experience with family, with friends, with your community. Uh, you were in Louisiana, but now you're in Texas. I mean, how has it been for you standing up for, for science and evolution? Uh, how have the people around you treated you because of that? So the thing for me is my family's always been fairly supportive. I actually only know about the law because my dad was in Louisiana politics and would come home and be like, they're passing a creationism law. I can't believe this is happening. And so that was sort of what got me initially interested is it was as part of my dad's work, and he'd come home and mention, like, oh, this, I mean, it was one of the, oh, this silly thing happened in Louisiana today because it's Louisiana, and that was the one that really stuck out to me. And so my family's always been supportive. I also luckily was in a little bit of a bubble at my high school where my high school was far more liberal than the surrounding state and was generally fairly supportive of what I was doing. And so I tend to, the, the issue I get, I mean, I get a lot of anonymous stuff on the internet, but you just sort of have to brush that off. And I guess the good news for me is I get a lot fewer death threats than most people in this line of work. Like, because I've, I've seen, I, like, I've had some nasty stuff said, but compared to like the volume that I've seen other people get, it's actually pretty minimal. And so I can be grateful for that. Um, 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate your talk, Eugenie Scott's right, be right before it. And I, my heart really goes out to you being in place in Louisiana, Texas, where I imagine the struggle is really um, intense and very difficult. I think that the struggle to make sure evolution is taught in public schools in a more liberal northern state like Washington or where I grew up in Vermont, it's not as intense. But there is sort of an, a, a struggle here in that we do have a lot of mysticism in our schools. And I would want to see how you can sort of talk about how we can make this movement for science education um, and sort of a deepening of secularism more broad and more deep. And just to provide people with one example, I live in Olympia, Washington. Olympia, Washington is a well-known school. It's evergreen. It, it, it's a really good school, but um, it, and it's a publicly funded school. Um, but they offer classes, part-time classes in alternative medicine, which include things like Reiki and acupuncture and the whole, it's all faith healing, but it just comes from a different type of faith than Christianity. Mm -hmm. And I get very frustrated that my tax dollars go to fund this type of education for college students. And I don't understand why more people in Washington aren't as upset as their tax dollars going to fund creationism in Louisiana. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just, it, people need to start standing up and leading a movement against those along with the creationism because the, I mean I do hear that a lot where there's I mean people will say well I'm in California and so I obviously don't have the same problem as you do and the two there's sort of two points on that which is creationism isn't really just a Louisiana thing it's not really even a southern thing I mean we've seen creationism bills introduced in Montana Colorado New Hampshire and so it happens all over the country and the thing is if you're in somewhere I know uh, CFI is located in Amherst or not yeah in Amherst in Buffalo I know that's fairly different than, say, New York City. And so they may have to deal with a lot more problems than what you assume would be the, the standard attitude in New York. And so, so it's not just a southern thing. It's not just a, it's not just a Louisiana thing. And there are also other issues where it's like, I mean, faith healing, let's say I get the most anger I ever face, actually, doesn't come from when I talk about creationism. Everyone, I mean, if people know I'm against creationism, but if I mention, if I post a Scientific American article about GMOs, for example, I will have people s sending me angry messages on Facebook and screaming at me and going crazy. And it, the science denial comes in many forms, and it's still science denial. That, that's the easiest thing. Like, science denial is science denial, no matter what you're talking about. And it's, it's sort of, it's a harder message for people to get because it's something, I mean, I'm sure there are ways where I don't know the science and I haven't really done the research and so I think something that's wrong because everyone has certain things like that. So the simplest thing is on a personal level, I'll just try and if I, if I, don't, know, if I don't know the science and I realize I don't know the science, I'll try and go see what the scientists say. And I, I try and improve on that as well as I can. And I hope everyone else does that, and I try and show people how to do that when I meet people. That's really the best I can do, is what I'd say on that. And it helps for someone to stand up and lead a movement if you're, say, getting taught, if your tax dollars are going to faith healing. I don't know the specific legality surrounding that, but there's probably, Americans United may know, or the ACLU may know, and so I'd reach out to them, talk to them about what you can do, and stand up against it. That's the best advice I can give. One more time for Zach. Future looks bright. The people like him, our future looks bright. <laughs>